Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do something challenging. Let's take a look at this. 27 raised to the minus log base 3 of 2. How do you solve that? Well, there's different ways to get to the answer. And so we're going to show you two different approaches. They're not entirely different, but there's an interesting twist on how we're going to do it a second time. And let me show you how to do that. So first, what we probably should do is change the base so we can calculate what that exponent is equal to. We have log base 3 of 2, so what we can do here is on the side, we can say the log okay. base 3 of 2 is equal to the log base 10, the common log, of the number 2 divided by the log base 10 of the old base 3. And we can take the log of 2 and divide it by the log of 3 and get a number. So let's do that. So we take 2, take the log, Divided by 3, take the log, and that's equal to 0 0.63093. All right, so then you say, well, this can now be written as 27 raised to the minus 0 0.63093 power. All right, and maybe I can... Put a few more decimal places in there to get it really accurate. So that would be 929753. Okay, so now we take the number 27 and raise it to that power. So let's see what we get. So put a negative sign in there and we go, well, let's see here, 27 raised to the negative, whoop, raised to the point, ah, let's try again, 27 raised to the 0.63092975 put the negative in front and we get 0 0.125 which is equal to 1 over 8 all right so that's the answer of that expression now what else could we have done well what we could do is we can take the log of that so let's take the log of 27 minus raised to the minus log base 3 of 2. I said, well, wait a minute. If, so that is not equal to that, because when you take the log of something, you change it. But then if we take the antilog later, we get back to what we started with. So that's what we're going to do. We already know what this is equal to. So we say that this is the log of 27 raised to the minus 0 0.63092753. But now that we have it as a log, we can take this and put it in front. So this is minus 0 0.63092753 times the log of 27. Now what we could do is we could take the antilog of that and then it's back equal to what we started. So 10, so that's the antilog, when I take the base 10 and raise it to this exponent, I get minus 0 0.63092973 times the log of 27, and that should equal what we started with. So this is equal to, first we take the log to put the exponent in front, then we take the antilog, and now we have the same answer, at least we should get the same answer as we got before. All right, let's try that and see what we get. So we have 2, take the log, divided by 3, take the log, equals, that gives us this. Now we multiply that times, uh, times 27, take the log, and we turn it into a negative. So now what we end up with, the following, this is equal to 10, times the negative, 0. 9030899987 and now when we take the antilog of that we get this is equal to 0 0.125 which is 1 over 8 and you notice we get the exact same answer so notice the difference here we simply converted the log base 3 of 2 to the log base 10 of 2 divided by log base 10 of the old base to get that exponent. So the exponent then changes to this number right here. And then we simply plug that into our calculator. We get 1 over 8. Or, yes, we do get the translation of this into common logs so we can find the value for that. But now we first 
take the log of both sides. So we take the log of this. Where are we here? So now we take the log of that quantity. We then get this number because now we take the exponent put in front. So we get the exponent times the log of 27. And then we take the antilog. So first we take the log, then we take the antilog to negate taking the log in the first place. And then eventually you can say that this is equal, whoop, this, I lost my pen here, is equal to this and equal to that final answer. It's actually not a bad technique. It's a technique that we use often to make things a little bit simpler. We take the log of something and then we come back and take the antilog. So we then essentially change anything and that way we sometimes make the exercise a lot easier to work with. And that is how we do that with logarithms. The method one is easier. Well, yeah, it's quicker, but essentially we showed that taking the log and then the antilog gives you the same answer. Don't change anything, and that's a good thing to know. Very useful.